वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल आज हम बात करेंगे श्री जना से जो कनाडा आई थी 2019 में शी केम हियर अलोन ऑन पिया द रीजन व्हाई वी आर डूइंग दिस वीडियो इज बहुत सारे लोगों ने पूछा है कि इफ यू आर कमिंग हियर एज सिंगल इफ यू आर स्पेशली इफ यू आर वुमेन एंड यू आर कमिंग हियर यू नो विदाउट एनी सपोर्ट हाउ डज दैट वर्क सो श्री जना एक्चुअली केम हियर उनका कोई सपोर्ट नहीं था दे डिडंट शी डिडंट हैव फैमिली हियर शी ऑब्वियसली यू नो केम हियर ऑल बाय हरसेल्फ जस्ट विद अ ड्रीम ऑफ सेटलिंग डाउन इन कनाडा Uh, and that's it so uh, we will know about her challenges we know about you know her struggles how she dealt with it and hopefully by end of this video aapko samajh aa jayega ki uh, if you are coming in as single or uh, otherwise uh, you should be able to weather a lot of storms that will come your way when you actually come to canada so let's get started sri jana it's a pleasure having you on the channel uh, we have had immense demand from people you know who are traveling here alone whether it's students ya fir immigrants hain so there has been a lot of demand you know for a video like this and thanks a lot for reaching out um you know we start with uh, something about you you know where you are from and what you do in canada thanks so jo thank you as i said it's it's a pleasure to be sharing my story uh and as i've sort of told you already uh i learned from a lot of people who came here before me and i think this is just a wonderful way of, of paying it forward so um you know more than happy to share my story uh you know the information i you know didn't have and that i do have now uh mm-hmm. to be able to sort of encourage other people in the process so really glad to be doing this uh i'm srijana uh and i am originally from this beautiful quaint hill station of darjeeling um in the north east of india mm-hmm. uh but i was in mumbai for many many years uh working in mumbai before moving to canada in february of last year 2019 and i'm currently in toronto in canada so you came in here uh, you know all by yourself right so tell us something about your immigration experience uh, what you did when you landed you know how was that did you have yes. any support here uh so i was in in mumbai before sort of making a, a rather uh impulsive and and not so well thought out decision uh to move countries uh and I applied to Canada and and things transpired you know fairly quickly from the time I applied uh and then I was alone so I packed a couple of suitcases um and I left um you know dreamy eyed thinking uh you know it it can be that tough um but I was right and wrong uh because in 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 ways um it wasn't as as uh, you know tough as you know I'd heard or envisioned mm-hmm. uh but in a whole lot of other ways it was a lot tougher than I had originally sort of anticipated uh so the first thing um or or the first um sort of you know thing to confront was that i didn't necessarily know anyone here mm. i had one very very distant acquaintance uh and so she said well you can come live with me i have a small den for you for the first um you know one month or two months or whatever time you need um you know till the time you're up and about and then you can figure out for yourself so with mm. that reassurance that i know one person in canada um you know i i kind of sort of you know almost um you know theoretically wow. sort of crossed over. oceans um when i came here um i came in february so um you know there was a blizzard there was a snowstorm um just you know the the setting changed quite dramatically mm-hmm. uh because i was in mumbai and you know it was really hot and then i got to um you know the coldest of colds uh mm-hmm. that i hadn't sort of quite you know you can you can read about it and and you can yeah. you know wonder but when you're faced with it um you know it's, it's quite it comes as a harsh surprise and so when i landed here you know even just getting out um you know i took 3 days because the the wind was just sort of push me back uh you know i i couldn't even cross the threshold of of the door because it was that cold even to get a sim card you know things as basic as as trying to figure out you know how do i open a bank account how do i get to the bank um mm. you know because i thought i was going to get asphyxiated uh, you know with all of that wind sort of just blowing at you pretty much wow. so um you know the the struggles were were really sort of you know from the the tiniest and the most minuscule of things like getting a sim card to the sort of broader question of you know jobs uh you know making it here and also sort of the emotional vulnerability of, of being alone so all of those compounded i think the initial few months of my experience here please you know just tell us briefly what you do what you used to do in mumbai and what you do now 
so I worked for uh, the New Zealand uh, High Commission in Mumbai. Mm-hmm. Uh, so of course, the High Commission, the, the primary office is in Delhi. Uh, but Mumbai has a really large visa processing office and, and the trade office um, and, and their presence is in Mumbai because it's mm-hmm. a fairly strategic city. Okay. Um, and I was, um, you know, managing, um, um, you know, a, a large team that sort of did a lot of immigration related work. So we did processing from policy, um, you know, from sort of mm-hmm. uh, liaising with the ministerial team in Wellington to sort of being the conduit of information around the South Asian region. So it was very strategic, um, you know, policy focused. Um, you know, I was, I was taking care of a big team as well. Uh, but when I came here, um, even though my area of interest was public policy, uh, I quickly realized that, um, you know, I was sort of, um, you, know, I, you know, my bike was too big uh, and, and that, um, you know, I had to be realistic uh, about what I can do to start off because, mm. you know, you can be sort of overtly ambitious and, you know, and be like, oh, I'm going to be in Justin Trudeau's team. But but you also have to be realistic about, um, you know, um, you know what you've come with and, and um, you know, how can what you've done translate, um, right. you know, into sort of relatable work here. The sad part is that, um, you know, the Canadian experience is a barrier and, mm-hmm. um, you know, all of the sort of wonderful things that you've done, even though I worked for a foreign government uh, and even though New Zealand and Canada are very much comparable systems, uh, everything that I had done in Mumbai was very quickly expunged from my CV and then I had to start wow. afresh. Uh, but also um, a lot of these positions even though not explicitly said, required you to be a citizen because it was policy, it was confidential information, mm. it was government information, which I'd take a while to get to. Right. So because I had done immigration work, I quickly realized, okay, this is one aspect of my CV that I can possibly, um, you know, translate here quite quickly in terms of, you know, doable work mm-hmm. because I did need employment. Um, and so, uh, and I also very quickly realized that immigration is actually a licensed profession in Canada. So then I had to go back to school, um, you know, to, to complete the, the immigration consultant's diploma, which was a, I did a six months course. It's, okay. it's now changed. The nature of the course has changed and it's now become a much fuller length program. Yeah. But luckily when I was doing it, it was for six months um, and then, um, you know, worked towards the license. And then I started working for um, a very, very big uh, corporate law firm in Toronto doing uh, immigration work. All right. All right. Uh, look, so we won't talk about immigration, even though sure. a lot of people on the channel would want you to talk about immigration yes. but that's not the topic and we'll keep it for another day you know a lot of people um, and especially women uh, who are coming here either on PR or study uh, they have had you know they have asked this question many times on the channel in the comments that uh, is it safe for women is it safe for single people uh, how do you manage if you are coming here uh, without a spouse without a support system especially as a woman from a women's yeah. point of view uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's um, you know, I mean, while I'm completely conscious of the fact that safety is a very subjective sort of issue, it depends really on sort of where you are at the moment and, you know, what cities that you've lived in, um, you know, et cetera. And, and it's, it's difficult to give a blanket answer of, oh, it's extremely safe here versus some other city in India. I was in Mumbai where um, I, I did experience a lot of freedom. We went to sort of marine drive for midnight chai all the time. And, and sometimes you use sort of the local train uh, to commute around. Um, and I, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily feel unsafe. Uh, in Mumbai, when I came to Toronto, well, you know, it's it's a you know first world city, and and it is amazing, and you know things are far more regulated. Um, sort of people stick to their business, and mm. you know they don't sort of necessarily you know we, we don't cross lanes at all, right? right. But uh, there were times when sort of I had to do a lot of traveling, especially for my course, since I was doing an evening six to ten p.m. course, mm-hmm. and there were times when I was in the subway alone at ten p.m. coming back. Uh, you know, knowing so little about even the topography of the city or, um, you know, I mean, you know, if the subway stops, what do I do and things like that. So very, very Mm. quickly, uh, you learn that you've got to have your SOS numbers ready. You've got to have all of the emergency helpline numbers ready. Um, You know, you've got to avoid, you know, making some weird eye contact. So, Mm. uh, you know, all of your, you know, small, you know, tricks up your sleeve that you, um, you know, you hone over time uh, because it is something that you have to be, um, you know, largely cognizant of. Uh, but having said that, uh, it is also, uh, you know, I, I do feel that this is a safe city uh, and that people are respectful of your space uh, mm-hmm. and, and your sort of private, uh, you know, whatever you're uh, out and about to do. And, and that, um, you know, people don't necessarily uh, collide in ways that, you know, you'd find uncomfortable uh, as long as you stick to uh, sort of your, um, your space as well. Uh, but there are times when it can get slightly difficult especially if you're alone at night mm. because there are very, very few people out at night. Right. Over here, it's not like Mumbai where, you know, the crowd sort of blankets you and it gives you a sense of safety. That's missing here because you mm. can oftentimes be alone 
sort of warrior almost in you know in, in that entire sort of subway system so it is a bit disconcerting uh, but i haven't felt overwhelmingly unsafe here initially i would encourage if you're someone coming alone it helps to have someone in the house just in terms of speaking to someone you're trying to navigate mm-hmm. your way around you want to find out hey how do i get that presto card or uh, you know do you have a map of the subway or why are people at tim hortons always saying double double you know even even things like this <laughs> you want to be able to talk to someone yeah. because you're still figuring out uh, and so also isolation um, you know can emotionally uh, you know be a very very sort of a it can be a, a legitimate barrier mm. um, you know for you to sort of you know move forward uh, and so i'd recommend that if you know someone or if you feel safe enough to sort of live with someone when you come here initially um you know do that because i've uh, you know i've sort of um taken advantage of that situation and bounced off ideas with the other person that i was with like what would you say would be a top 3 challenges when you are coming in single whether you are coming in after pr or you are coming on student visa um uh, so the first is is the one that sort of i've already alluded to i think the fact that you're alone uh, it can be terribly isolating and i and i felt that a lot uh, because you know mumbai the moment i stepped out there were a gazillion sort of rickshaws uh, mm. whatever you know uber and and they were sort of you could just talk to people when mm-hmm. i came here um, you know on that lane um, where where the house was there were literally there were literally two people and i was like why wow. are there two people in this city uh and and the, the setting didn't change for a few days because it was snow covered um you know maybe mm. people were indoors and and there aren't just you know too many people uh you know meandering around you know maybe mm. it's more an india thing where we are sort of just you know uh you know walking That's around yeah. you know, trying to have conversation and stuff like that people are extremely sort of you know they do their work and get back home uh and also sort of the the weather does make things difficult uh so being alone um emotionally if you aren't prepared um you know it can get difficult it can get rough um mm. you know no matter because people have this very sort of starry eyed wow you're going to canada uh it must be also wonderful look at the opportunity and while i recognize that uh you know it can be a privilege and a lot of people want to be in your position um the fact that you're alone uh you don't know anyone my parents were not necessarily you know engaged with me in that journey because they mm-hmm. were really far away so i was by mm. myself trying to figure out mm. okay i'm in a new country i need to build a life here uh so from ideation to uh you know conceptualization to execution you are on your own mm. and that is a heavy burden to carry and you need to be prepared emotionally to be able to do that um the second challenge is again as an extension of the first one just doing everything alone moving houses right mm. um u haul okay who will drive who do i contact yeah. um how do i got furniture from ikea i had no idea how to assemble it i've never done it in india <laughs> so i'm reading this instruction book that felt like sort of a novel and i don't know which cog is where and and which screw is where things as simple as that mm. you know that um you know i taken for granted in india because bhaiya ji aap kar denge so it's it's just you know things like that how do i put you know ikea furniture together or okay i i don't necessarily have a car so um from walmart you know how do i carry four and a big cuz i eat a lot of rice so how do i get that big rice yeah. bag home you know so things that uh, you know you don't necessarily grapple mm. with in in bombay because you know you take the conveniences for granted because you know it's just there uh, but here everything has to be planned executed all of that so mm. the second thing is is just uh, the physical isolation and having to do everything on your own Uh, number 3 and and something very very important i think is finances um is toronto is an expensive city all said and done Um, and when you come here um you know no matter how stellar your job or or you know i don't know if there are real exceptions but when you're not earning that much um it it you know you do have to be sort of calculated with your mm. finances and when two people earn it's a different thing altogether you're mm. adding to the household income and things do get easier um especially initially i see a lot of couples who are like oh okay my husband or you know my spouse has a job so i can wait you know i can wait it out a few more months and so i i can sort of get to my dream job and i have that much more time where as when you're alone uh you're you're sort of it's it's you know do or die and and you're mm. sort of in in this sort of you know veritable battlefield all by yourself so um finances also you have to be careful um you know and and i guess plan the whole thing uh and above all is i think just trust in yourself and and believe yeah. that you know you have the capacity to do it yeah given all these challenges that you've faced in the last one one and a half years uh you know what would you say about your decision like uh would you say it was worth it you know or there's a caveat to it yeah. 
I think, I mean, I, I ask myself this, uh, you know, when I'm in a particularly reflective mode, because um, it is an ostensible sort of crossing oceans, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I think I've also been the types that, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, always um, aspiring for the next thing. Uh, and, I'd, you know, in Mumbai, I felt like I'd hit the glass ceiling. Um, you know, I, I didn't have a Kiwi passport, you know, for me to sort of move up the ranks, uh, you know, professionally. Mm -hmm. So I had to do something. And I said, you know, why not stir things up? And, and why not challenge yourself? Right. Mm. Uh, and so you change your settings dramatically. And then I have to, I have to start from scratch. So I come here, I go back to school in my mid thirties. I'm in a classroom where oftentimes the youngest or, or majority of the people are in their twenties. Mm. Uh, you're starting to study again. You're working. Um, I was like, can I learn French? So I, you know, I joined French classes on, on week three of being here. Okay. Um, you know, what can I do? You know, and, and so you're constantly reinventing yourself mm. uh, to sort of meet that challenge head on uh, because in that process is, is your refinement. Uh, I think as, as a human being too, uh, because, you know, I was comfortable. I wasn't, I had a good career. Uh, mm. You know, I felt like things were going fairly well. I knew the place, you know, my, my family was around in India. So from that to sort of dramatically moving to a place where you know no one and nothing, uh, it's, it's required of me immense resilience and, and, and the spirit of having to reinvent myself mm. and not to be uh, to challenge status quo all the time. And I've enjoyed the process and it's, it's hard work. And I, and I don't want to sound like, you know, uh, sort of I'm on a pedestal saying, hey, like, you know, self-improvement. I don't want to be Oprah Winfrey, but, um, you know, it, it does require you to put aside all of your inhibitions and try things that, you know, you never considered, uh, you know, in, in the realm of possibility earlier. Mm. So uh, it does take you on, on this significant journey. And um, it's, it's such a, you know, interesting story to tell to someone else I think you know one day I don't know my children grandchildren my you know friends children grandchildren you know it'll be such an interesting uh, story to narrate peppered with so much adventure and, and what I did uh, because what is the story without the share of difficulties right and, and you want this to be a grand story. Srijana this was a, it was really a pleasure having you on the channel and I'm sure you have inspired many people and cleared a lot of doubts that we uh, you know that we could not clear obviously because we have don't have the same situation uh, but yeah it was a pleasure having you on the channel and yeah. So guys, that's all we have for today. I hope this was useful. If you like this video, please like it and if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we will bring such great videos and bring such new experiences so that when you come in any situation, you will help when you actually come here and you are not alone. Our videos are always with you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.